good morning. Welcome to another action-packed episode of Bad Tree Productions. I'm your host, Jay Bo. A cameraman is Blake. A battery charger is Uncle Ty. Who's not with us here today is um, uh, Jeremy. He's down on a... He's in Steel Vanther down by the river uh, working hard. Is those And that's, you know, those are his words. But anyway, today I'd like to kind of explain the mentality behind... Uh, the Nacho Cuda and um, kind of where we're going and what we've done, etc. Let me start off by saying that um, back in oh about 15, 20 years ago, uh, we picked up a very similar project car. It was a '67 Barracuda. It was a fastback, and uh, what the hell? Um, it was a roller, and all the parts were in boxes. Uh, the previous owner had uh, disassembled it for to get it ready for paint. So I got a hold of it, got a good deal on the whole car. It was like seventeen hundred dollars at the time. So and it was from Washington. It was uh, I'd say ninety nine percent rust free, rust free. So pretty cool car, and I really liked it. But um, I was going to pick up where the original owner left off and continue with the paint and body work and uh, getting it uh, put back together. Then after that. So while it was still on the trailer, we uh, took it to a couple of local shops. And at that time, both shops' quotes were identical. They were uh, $8,000 for paint and bodywork. And it didn't really require that much bodywork. So everything was relatively straight in this car. So, I mean, 8000 bucks to me at that time, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you could have bought a car car that was all together and ready to go and it had it would probably have decent paint you know uh, so I just couldn't wrap my head around it but that's how things were back then and before before the age of, uh, of rat rods you know uh, and with a rat rod you can have you know patinaed a, a whole total patinaed vehicle and um, and that's kind of acceptable and it's kind of uh, you know smiled upon nowadays so so that's kind of the route we took with this thing and um, so this thing looks like we pulled it out of a ditch you know basically and slapped on some junkyard parts like the hood and the uh, front fender they don't match uh, the nose I call it the nose cone it's a Valance or, or whatever anyway uh, you know that's maroon um, so that's kind of the course we've we've went so it, but in the meantime I like uh, I like stuff to be mechanically up to snuff so the engine transmission they're they're new uh, the car originally came through with a, a seven and a quarter inch rear end that got swapped out to an eight and three quarter. Um, the 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 brakes are from like say Mopar, Mopar Actions uh, Disco Tech. Uh, there's 73 uh, duster brakes for the most part, a body brakes. So you got modern stopping power with with this stuff with this setup. So it, we went and did the set so like the headlight upgrade. Uh, Blake, you can throw a link up to that. So now you're you're on par with uh, everything else that's on the road out there as far as like light output. I think we increased the light output by it looks like 75% or so, but it's really a, an awesome improvement. So anyway, on today's episode, we're going to uh, uh, focus our attention on uh, the rear tail lights. As I watch this thing go up and down the street, like we'll see with Blake or Jeremy driving it, um, one thing I do notice, and that is uh, that the tail lights just aren't up to snuff. So... They do make, uh, like, uh, I think the taillights that I put in it were 1157s, and they were Sylvania, Sylvania and they were kind of the best uh, bang for the buck as far as uh, a good, you know, replacement taillight went. But um, they're still not that great. Uh, the taillights themselves are kind of, uh, the lenses are dull. Uh, I imagine that the the foil that's, that's uh, the reflector inside is probably dull, too. So they're not nearly as good as they were back in, you know, 67. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and try to correct some of that stuff. Now, I know there's uh, there's LEDs out there that are 1157 replacement, but from what I've seen, they just leave kind of a little hot spot of, uh, of light. Uh, one thing that's cool about an LED is it snaps it snaps right on, you know. It, it instantly comes on where, where a regular incandescent has to kind of warm up and come on. But that's about the only advantage that I can see, and uh, they don't look that great from what I've from what I've seen. And I do I do realize that you could probably um, uh, go with a panel of LEDs, but um, you know what? I'm not going to do that right now. Maybe maybe in the future that'll happen. But for right now, we're going to go with a set of um, what the hell? Oh, there's Sylvania 3496 long life bulbs. Okay, and that's kind of a compromise uh, from what I gather they put out. Uh, Oh, 
uh, light output uh, over the standard 1157s. So that's what I'm gonna do. So anyway, I uh, checked around uh, our local local parts, uh, auto parts stores, and these weren't in stock, okay? Uh, I checked uh, Advance Auto, they didn't have them in stock. Um, I actually looked at Walmart, they didn't have them in stock. But um, I was in the market for like a feather pillow, and Walmart does not carry, you know, a feather pillow in stock, but you can order it on their website. So that's what I went ahead and did. Anyway, while I was, while I was ordering a, a pillow, I decided to go ahead and order the Savinia bulbs on the, the, uh, the Walmart website also. So here's what, here's what happened. So Walmart sends me an advanced auto parts box. And it's got the uh, it's got the bulbs in it, the ninety or the thirty four ninety six uh, uh, bulbs. So, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And then what we're gonna do is we'll uh, swap in one bulb, and then uh, we'll wait till night, and then we'll compare the two, and then you can see for yourself what you think. So, anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, check out our friends at uh, Rabid Transit Garage. It's pronounced rabid, like, you know, a dog with rabies. Anyway, these guys, uh, Jay and Jason, they're working on a, a 60, I think it's a 67 or a 68 Barracuda. But anyway, uh, kind of a neat project. Uh, go give them guys a check out. They just dropped off uh, a 904 transmission uh, for us guys, and we're going to gut that uh, shortly. But anyway, give them guys a look-see and, um, and tell them J-Bo sent you. But anyway... Here's the package. Here's what you get in the package. This is what eight bucks buys you. It's the Sylvania Long Life, uh, 3496s. So anyway, like I said, uh, Nacho. Uh, you know, we could we could uh, scrub the roof, but I chose not to. I mean, it takes a long time to develop uh, moss that's actually been set out in the sun and it's dried now, so the moss is actually dead. It's not going anywhere. But as you can see, we've kind of wore off some of that uh, original moss. Uh, mod top roof or whatever whatever you have but anyway um, you know the nacho is what it is anyway it's kind of kind of just pieced together you know so it's kind of fun for me to make it look kind of grody I guess or whatever yet make it uh, yet the underneath of it it's mechanically mechanically sound you know so far um, anyway what the hell there's a gopher or a groundhog or something over there Anyway, on the other end of the spectrum, I like taking things that are uh, modern and making them look like they're old. Uh, case in point is, uh, you know, I got this big lighter here, okay, and that's what one looks like nowadays. But, you know, imagine what it would have looked like if it were produced, oh, 130 years ago, like the Victorian era. What would that big lighter look like? Hmm. Would it maybe look something like this? Yeah, I think so. So back in the early days, uh, things were made out of copper and brass, and they polished that copper and brass. That was kind of poor man's gold back then. Uh, I then embellished this lighter with uh, uh, some brass parts, maybe a couple of sprockets and gears. There's actually a tube that runs from like a gas cylinder that's on this side, and then there's an air to, um, um, canister in this side here, and they both mix in this carburetor up here, and then look at this. Ooh, 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 it works. Wow. So anyway... Yeah, I like to make old stuff look like it's, wait, new stuff, make it look, shut up. I like to make uh, new stuff look like it's old. So kind of the idea behind that, uh, you know, in a way. But anyway, use your imagination. That's the point. Anyway, the inside of this uh, uh, taillight housing is, uh, it's crusty. So... I'm going to take a look at it. I'll do it later, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just replace the ball. But but uh, later, I might want to go ahead and kind of detail the inside of it. Like I said, maybe I'll get some Super 77, spray it, and then and, uh, spray uh, some tin foil and uh, place that inside just to reflect more light. But for right now, we're just going to throw one of these in and uh, see what the hell we got. God, that looks terrible. What the hell? That's not what I was expecting. But uh, I wonder if it's better at night. I really kind of doubt it. That's terrible during the daytime. Anyway, this thing's gonna. This thing's just gonna need to be taken apart, taken apart, cleaned up inside, uh, get a better reflector in there. I'm gonna take a look at doing that right now. Anyway, I don't know if you can see it or not, but God, I can only feel the grit. God dang it! 
It's almost like it's mud or dirt. See that? But they're kind of pitted and shit. Looks like these screws here need to come off, and maybe that maybe that lens comes out then. I'm guessing. But anyway, I was just kind of thinking, you know, actually I've got a set of uh, I've got a set of 68 tails, and that would uh, that would actually take care of the uh, lack of um, uh, reverse lights I I currently don't have. Uh, and I kind of like the 68 back or the 68 tails better, but it's already got a 68 front grill, so maybe I don't know, maybe that's what I'll do. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disassemble this and take a look at it. And see if I can improve it at all, and then slam her back together. You go bad. <laughs> yeah, I took this thing out, and it actually had water in it. It rained really bad last night. Uh, the windshield, uh, the windshield seal leaks too, so the carpet's all wet. So that's always nice. There we go. Maybe it should just fall apart. Oh yeah. Oh, for crying out loud! Look at that. Yeah, that explains a lot. Yeah, the seal seal up here was uh was letting water through it. And of course, the backside's not not really any better. But I actually have a seal kit for these. So I think what I'm gonna do is get some Scotch Brite in there, clean this up real good. Uh, I probably hit it with like a. You know, I, at least if I hit it with like an aluminized or uh, kind of a chrome type paint, uh, that might, that would be a lot better than this. Uh, this is almost black here, so uh, this is a lot, this has a lot, it's kind of got some carbon buildup in it too, so maybe, I don't know, exhaust fumes going into it, but, uh, you know, it needs to be scrubbed and cleaned and repainted, and then I'll slam it back together and see if I made an improvement, all right? Shit, yeah, you gotta see this too. But look at this the bottom of the lens. Look at the, the crud build up there. So yeah, the seal's terrible in this. I'll clean these up, scrub them up real good, and uh, you know, kind of neat. Maybe I'll polish the lens up a little bit, but at least get them cleaned up. So anyway, stay tuned. <sighs> so anyway, you're gonna want to be you're gonna want to be careful when you're dealing with. Uh, 67 parts because they're they're fragile and this already this must have been stress stress fractured for quite a while but you can see the dirt you know kind of in this crack uh, just this little piece here was holding it together it looked like but yeah it just kind of it kind of fell apart as I was washing it so anyway be careful with stuff anyway here's kind of the plan I don't have any super 77 but I think all it is basically is like contact cement so and I'm probably wrong. It's probably a lot better than that. But I'm going to go ahead and coat some uh, some of this tin foil with contact cement. I'm going to coat the inside of uh, this housing with some cement. Then I'm going to stick this tin foil in it, kind of work it in place, see if we can get some more reflection out of it just for the hell of it. But anyway, we'll see how that works. All right. I think maybe I'll contact cement that too, just to keep it in place, just because I like keeping old stuff together or whatever. But uh, super glue probably be better, but I can't find any. So. Anyway, we'll get back with you in a second. This is IPA. Uh, isopropanol alcohol. I'm going to go ahead and clean the plastic up with that. Yeah, so contact cement works like this. You, uh, you basically coat both parts. Okay, mm-hmm. Quit it. Son of a... You let them get tacky. That's not going to be... That's not going to be an issue because uh, it's pretty warm out right now. Mm, this stuff smells really good too, but don't inhale it. It's not good for you. Mm, kind of tacky. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's how tacky that is. 
you kind of want to let it set till it's almost getting close to being dry. Like I said, that's not going to be an issue. Anyway, and then these things are going to get bolted together, so that's going to hold it together anyway. So, but anyway, the inside of it cleaned up pretty decent. It's a little cleaner. Uh, that should help out quite a bit. The outside is really kind of dull, kind of scratched up. It could stand to be polished, or uh, and I considered maybe using that wipe new product. Uh, scuffing these with a little supplied pad and then uh, hitting it with wipe new that gives a kind of a gloss coating uh, that'd be nice but I'm actually kind of thinking I'm leaning toward maybe throwing some 68 tail lights on this because that would take care of my uh, lack of uh, backup lights in too so uh, just something to think about so anyway this stuff's about right I'm going to go ahead and stick these together Like I said, I think super glue would probably work, work better for this, but this contact cement, I've got it, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be all right. So at least it's going to hold it together. The screw's going to hold it together. This has got stress fractures around it also, so you want to kind of proceed with caution when you're tightening these things back up so that you don't, uh, you know, I don't even know if the screw goes all the way through. See, there's where my crack is right here, and I think the screw's about just that long, so... I'm going to be counting on uh, these outer screws to hold this shit together, so. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of foil that's about this shape. And I'm going to use the same uh, same product. Uh, we'll glue both parts or whatever, and then I'll slap it in there and see if we get, see if we get some better light out of the deal. Hopefully we do. Anyway, yeah, if this doesn't work out that great, then I've got a hell of a mess to clean up probably, but oops, settle down. Okay. So that's what I got. Kind of crude, but uh, actually, you know, uh, I just think we've got some, uh, Oh, like some aluminum tape or whatever. That might be, work better. You just cut that into strips and tack it right in. It would probably be a little, I don't know. And plus, you can still see the pits kind of coming through the foil. So this thing really need, needed to be sanded smooth. But uh, anyway, I think it's going to go a little further in uh, providing better light output. So we'll go ahead and poke a hole in it and slam her back together and see what we got. Oh, that actually looks a little better than the other one, I think. All right, I'm gonna get it plugged in and uh, throw that light back in it and we'll see what it looks like. It actually looks cleaner. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Ooh, oh. Yeah, why don't we turn this off for now? So that is absolutely uh that's a big improvement. Yeah, it's reflecting a lot more light than the other side is. So yeah, I kinda like that. So this is in broad daylight. Well, uh, like I said, yeah, that's putting out a lot more light. Yeah, I think I could do a lot better job with uh, some of that reflective or that, uh, that actually, that aluminum tape or whatever. Uh, it's kind of a, it's got a kind of a chrome finish, and it would probably stay straighter instead of uh, contouring itself to all those uh, uh, imperfections in the housing. But it is a lot better than that. So maybe I'll do the same thing to that, but. Anyway, we'll try the turn signal. Oh, that's that's a shitload of a lot better. Wow. I really like that. I like that a lot better. Let's do the right side ones. That's not bad. I think I like the left better. Anyway, I'm going to leave it this way for now. And then, like I said earlier, we'll check back uh, later tonight and see what it looks like. All right? 
All right, thanks, people. We'll be back. So on the right, it's a regular 1157, and on this side here is the, uh, what, the Sylvania? Here, get a... Mmm. 
Sylvania 3496, long life bulb, so that's on the driver's side. So we're gonna flick them on, see what the hell they look like. So, so on the left is the upgraded bulb. It does actually look brighter, doesn't it, Neil? Uh, Stand back here, bud. Way back here. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it looks it looks kind of flaky because that's probably because that tin foil is kind of not really laying flat. <laughs> oh, it's hot. Careful. There you go. You like that one better? They look the same. I mean, it's actually somewhat brighter, though, don't you think? It doesn't look any brighter than the driver's side, does it? Well, yeah, but that's got the... The driver's side looks brighter, don't you think so? So, whatever, I mean... I don't know, they look bright enough to me. They look bright, yeah, it's, it's dark out. You try the blinkers one. Well, you're turning left. Now you're turning right. Which way am I turning now? Right. How can you tell? Barely, but I can tell. I don't know, I think there's, I just, I personally think there's better light output. Right. I've seen you drive this thing around before and it, they just seem really dim. Mm-hmm. But I think it's Yeah, better. they look I a lot better. better. But anyway, eight bucks, you know, I think it's a little bit better. Blake is on the fence about it. It's Buckler. better. All right, you get that light out of my face right now. Production quality. No, Ain't, stop it with the crow's feet. Like, share, subscribe, ring that bell. Good, bad, ugly. Leave us a comment. <laughs> Whatever, get it out of my face. Face.